and very welcome to the next tutorial in a series of tutorials for the Lampy console. In this tutorial we will talk about effects and the effects view. So what are effects? In its very theoretical form, effects are applied to attributes using an effect table that modifies and applies a mathematical function, such as a sine or cosine wave, to the value against time. Each effect is added by parameter and is displayed as one row within the effect programmer. In a more practical way, effects could be just a circle or a pan tilt wave or a dimmer effect that runs on selected and specified fixtures. Effects created on the Lampy console are stored into playback scenes or executors. If a playback contains multiple cues, effects will be tracked through the playback in the same way as regular values will be. However, we are going to have an in-depth look at that in a later tutorial. If a queue with a new effect starts, the Lampy console will determine all effects that are running and will crossfade from them to the new effects and hence turn off all previously started effects from previous queues running on the same attribute. If you would like to stop an effect for good, you would need to add an off effect curve, which is basically just a flat effect form without any size. But don't worry, we're going to walk you through this process. The Lampy does a good job at keeping effects in sync. It is an important functionality, especially when you combine different effects lines to one big effect. Let's change to the effects view. We can do so by clicking on the effects button from within the home screen. To add, delete or load an effect from current output, we use the effects action dialog, which we can open by clicking on the magic wand button. As we do not have any fixtures or effects selected at the moment, all the options are grayed out. So let's go back to the groups view and select all of our spot fixtures. Let's set an intensity value and return to the effects view. Now click on the magic wand button and click on add effect. In this dialog we have multiple options. We can either use one of the predefined effects by simply scrolling down looking for the effect we would like to add and clicking on the button of the effect or we can create a custom effect in which we have to select a parameter and a curve that is applied to this parameter. When we are done, we click on Add Effect. Let's have a look at how we modify these effects. To be able to adjust the various attributes that this effect row has using the encoders, the effect row needs to be selected. You may deselect or select an effect row by clicking on the button in the first column. When an effect row is selected, you may use the encoders to alt minimum size, maximum size, speed, offset, and if you scroll more further to the right, also the other parameters. Let's have a look at the different effect attributes. As already mentioned, the first column is used to select this effect row or deselect it. All the other effect attributes can be changed by either double-clicking, right-clicking or long-clicking into the editor set. The fixtures column displays the number of fixtures that are assigned to this effect line. Double-clicking or right-clicking or long-pressing on the cell opens the programmer set fixtures dialog which allows you to select the fixtures assigned to this effect row or update the fixtures that are assigned to this row. The parameter column is read-only and displays the attribute an effect is assigned to. The mode column displays the mode of this effect line. Double-clicking, right-clicking or long press toggles the mode between relative and absolute. Relative effects apply a mathematical function around the current base value of the selected attribute. For example, an effect on the dimmer channel that has a value of 50% and a size of minus 25 and plus 25 will alternate between a 25% and 75% value. If the base value in the values view or the output is at 75%, this effect will alternate between 50 and 100%. In contrast, absolute effects apply a mathematical function from the size minimum value to the size maximum value. In this case, it is also possible to use presets for minimum and maximum size. For example, if size minimum is set to 25% and size maximum is set to 25%, 
then the effect will appear frozen. If the size minimum is set to 25% and the size max is set to 75%, then the effect will alternate between 25 and 75%. Let's have a look at the curve column. The curve column defines which function is applied over time on this parameter. You may change the current effect form on a per effect line basis by double clicking, right clicking or long pressing into the cell. We have already briefly mentioned the size minimum and size maximum columns. Let's change the effect mode to absolute and set the size minimum to zero. Now this effect will alternate between 0% and 109.3%. Let's change the maximum value to 100%. Let's have a look at the speed column. The speed column defines the speed of the effect. The measure is in cycles per minute, or CPM, which equals to the number of full run-throughs of an effect cycle per minute. The speed may be changed or fanned by using the encoders, in conjunction with the fan key found on the front panel. Or you may also double-click into the cell to change the value. The offset column defines the starting offset of the effect for each fixture in the effect. It is ended in degree. 0 to 360 degrees means that the offset is fanned and the first fixture starts at 0 degrees, whereas the other fixtures in this effect row will be delayed to have a staggered kind of effect. This is used to create wave-like effects. It may be changed using the encoder in conjunction with the fan key or by double-clicking on it. Whenever you double click on it, you have an option to randomize an effect offset, or you can select some of the predefined offsets on the right. In this case, let's select 0 to 360. Let's scroll further to the right. Now let's adjust the duty cycle. The duty cycle attribute defines how long the duration of the effect within the cycle is. It is assigned as a percentage. It may be used to build chasers and more. Right now, the duty cycle is at 100%. Let's change the duty cycle to 50% and see what happens. You can now see that each fixture overall kind of squeezes its effect together. This can result in very interesting effects, especially with dimmer channels. Let's adjust the duty cycle a little bit more using the encoder, so that we only have one light popping up at a time. Okay, so that's what we like. Now, let's have a look at the grouping column. The grouping column divides all fixtures running this effect line into groups. The value specified defines the number of fixtures in one group. For example, in our current effect, we have the fixtures do the effect one after each other. If we change the grouping to 5 and press Enter, it will always be two fixtures at the same time because we have 10 fixtures selected. The next column to choose from is called Symmetric. Symmetric toggles between off and on. Whenever on is selected in symmetric, the effect will be done symmetrically from the outside to the inside. Please note that as the console does not know about your physical arrangement of the fixtures, this is based purely on selection order of the fixtures. The next column defines the direction of the effect. We can double click on it and we can select forward backward, bounce but start forward, and bounce but start backward. The last column is called shots. The number of shots defines how many times this effect is run. By default it is set to endless, but we can set it to two. Now 
as our effect already ran through two cycles, it will stop. This can be very handy to program quick chases or quick run-throughs whenever something happens to keep it on a button. Let's set it again to endless. Now let's have a look at how to delete effects. Whenever we would like to delete an effect, we need to make sure it is selected in the first column. After, we can press the magic wand button and click on delete selected FX. Now let me show you how to stop running effects. In order to do so, let's create a new effect. We do this by clicking on the magic wand button, add effect, and in the list, let's just pick the fly out wave effect. Now let's record this effect to a playback. We press the record key and we select the first playback. Now let's clear the programmer and start the playback. If we want to stop this effect for certain fixtures, if we now want to stop this effect for certain fixtures, we simply select them We can assign them a new value. We change to the effects editor. We click on the magic wand button. We click on add effect. And we choose pan tilt off. Now the dimmer effect is still running. To also stop the dimmer effect, we click on the magic wand button, click on add effect again, and we click on off for dimmer. Now we can record that as a second queue. Clear our programmer, and whenever we're in the first queue, the effect is running. And as soon as we advance to the second queue, the effect will stop for these fixtures. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial, I hope you enjoyed it and please come back soon when we will talk about the playback faders.